So this is the crossover pipe point oh crd om 642 diesel mercedes sprinter this thing has given me days of trouble literally spent a day and a half figuring out exactly how to do this if i could show folks just like you how to do it too in 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> rules of my channel are i inspire and empower folks just like you to do things yourselves not only showing you how to do things but explain to you why you do them Pay attention to this video and give me a couple of moments of your time at the end of the video. If you don't want to do that, if I helped you, turn the volume down, start the video, and let the suckers play. If you can afford it and you're not a broke dick like me, hit the damn donation button down at the bottom. He'll love you forever. If you've ever tried to change overpipe, it's a freaking nightmare. I've devised a system. These bolts, six millimeters, 1.0 pitch. You do not ever attempt to put a different size bolt in there. Make sure that you check the bolt size because on different sprinters on this crossover pipe, they could use a seven millimeter by 1.0 pitch. This is 16 millimeters deep. Do not use anything deeper than that. There's one particular bolt you will snap the head off of. I'm gonna show you some preventative stuff that you can do and how to get this up in there easily. Right here is these little tangs that are supposed to hold the bolts. Often simply don't work to hold these bolts. So we need to do another super trick to keep them bolts in there without the gasket falling off. It can be reused. So what we do is we just take a couple of little O-rings, put them right here on the bolts, and that'll help hold the bolt from falling out with the gasket so you can get it up into place. I put this gasket on and these bolts in first, and then that allows me to slide my gasket up underneath here for my turbo side. If you got the right gasket, still have this little tab on here. Reused these things when they were flat as shit, so you don't have to worry about that too much. One of the other things that I do is I always put a washer or two on the head side of these because there's one particular bolt, the inside bolt on the turbo side here. It's got a shallow hole and they strip out and break all the time so we don't want that to happen okay, so we got our pipe indexed like this and we're going to go around the turbo going to put our hand underneath here screw it into its place gasket on there we've got our o-rings on there let me look figured out during the installation in the video you'll notice that this bracket right here is up here it does not belong there it belongs on this straight portion right here I'm pretty sure this bracket's in the right location. I had to end up moving this from here to here inside the vehicle once I had it installed. It freaking sucked. Because it's still not fun even with these tips and procedures. Don't make that same mistake. Give you a visual view. This goes up and under. These brackets are extremely important that we tighten them down and put them back into their clamps and holders. All of these brackets are extremely important. You will bust this pipe if both of these bolts are not in these spots where they're supposed to be tightened down properly. I don't run a retail repair facility, but this guy's van was broke down and here for a day and a half because the last mechanic out of Colorado didn't put these bolts back in and he broke this EGR pipe crossover tube. Luckily, I found a bunch of other problems with his van and we were able to rectify them for him. I'm in Muskegon, Michigan and in Grand Rapids, Michigan. When people coerce me enough to work on their vehicles, I like working on sprinters. They're complicated and I like complicated stuff. That's about the only stuff that I really work on for the public is something that's difficult and hard to take on. Because I have a little bit of integrity, I'll tell you, I personally left these two bolts out one time out of the couple hundred that I've done, and I ended up driving to Chicago and putting these stinking bolts in and replacing this pipe. Put the damn bolts in there. It has to have them. First, you're gonna wanna think that it'll go in through here because it seems like you got a lot of room. It will not go in that way. Only way that it's gonna go in is if you drop it down and you're gonna kinda be wiggling it just and moving it a little bit in and out banging it around inside there like you were back in high school with the girl that got around town a lot that's why the o-rings holding the bolts and the gasket come in super handy and is a super trick until you feel it and you're gonna feel it tuck up underneath that exhaust right there notice how i dropped that down further than it needed to go and it will go in there it's kind of a struggle. I found that when I loosened my body up a little bit and stopped being so tense about it, it went right into place. Always find it helpful to know how stuff is fitting in their positions. Can't tell. I'm a little bit blind. And even if it was in a position that I could see, I wouldn't see it anyway. So looking at it from the back right here, this is what it looks like. Now what I do is I loosely start one screw right there. 
and reaching my hand and here I try to use my fingers to start it now you can tighten these up from below very easily with long extensions without even jacking the vehicle up straight on them but we we want to start them right now or get them close but since it's close and if you were to put some bolts in there i don't even have the gasket in there you could just reach up with your eight millimeter start the bolts but i like to start bolts by hand you can cross thread them really easy and these bolts should go in fairly easily when you're starting them if they don't your holes are messed up and that's the reason that we took this one apart because it had one stud broken off in it so watch for our video that shows you how to get that stud out of there get the turbo out of course it's a video on removing the turbo too if you want without removing the engine like some other jackass says you need to do on youtube trust me you don't need to remove the engine to change the turbo to do the intakes you don't even need to remove the engine and transmission to take the engine out I've got a great video on that too. Just in case that doesn't make sense, with my one finger, I start my bolt right here. I leave this bolt, worry about that, because that's held in by our O-ring and we can get to it from an extension on the bottom. Just make sure you don't tighten down any bolts before you start them all. Look right here between the engine block. Go straight up through there, get right on them bolts. Do not tighten them down before you have all four bolts started. I also recommend not torquing any of the four little bolts down until you start the two bracket bolts. Bolt, bolt started. And of course, even with making this video, this is the easiest time I've ever had with one of these. I want to point out this flange is only 13 and a half to 13 millimeters. The gauges probably weren't set. Hole depth is no more than 12 millimeters deep. So you wanna use a 16 millimeter long bolt with two washers. The flange itself is about seven millimeters deep. So you got 12 millimeters plus seven. You don't wanna go down that deep. So don't use anything longer than 16 millimeters. It's down inside the hole where this goes in, this doesn't go all the way through like this one does. There's probably rust and some particle buildup down inside there. And when you drive 12 millimeters of bolt down inside that hole, once it bottoms out, it's not going to start pushing the threads out of there, which often causes these bolts heads to break off. And you do not want to break this bolt head off. If you can avoid it at any cost, I highly recommend it. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you a video how to get that thing out of there. So on the inside bolt, I'm using a 16 millimeter long bolt with two half millimeter washers long enough to go down there and grab the threads well enough but not nowhere near enough to bottom out in the bottom of the hole it's really not a bad idea to blow that hole out i like blowing holes out okay so i always start that outside edge make sure i have that lip hanging out over there so i can push the gasket into place put the other bolt down inside there with the gasket in place i spin it clockwise around to the other hole to get this bolt started i take it and i put it in my two fingers and then I run my two fingers over here and then my, my other finger over here. And then I'm able to start that bolt down inside there. I kind of use all right here to push it into the hole, spin my thumb and my pointer finger to turn it into the hole. Anything other than my hand, but I'll move my gasket a little bit to get it to start. Bolts do not require a ton of torque. I know you think that they're holding back a ton of pressure. They're not holding back a ton of pressure because of the thin gaskets that's in there. So you're only going to go about 8 to 12 pounds of torque on them bolts. Basically palming your ratchet and tightening them up. They do not have to be over tightened. You will break them off. My name's Clay with the Clayway here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I believe my job is to inspire and empower folks just like you to do things yourself. If this video was helpful at nighttime, put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists, turn the volume down, and let them suckers play all night long. We greatly appreciate it. We love to have good subscribers here that make nice comments, but if you got shitty comments, just move on to somebody else's video that you won't find. This video was helpful. Consider subscribing, clicking them thumbs up, sharing this video, leave me some nice comments. Remember, no matter what it is in life that you think you can or cannot do, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them, be the very first to you. God bless folks and have the absolute best of days.